These are the reasons why your battery doesn't last all night. Reason number one is that your battery bank is too small. Now, when the capacity of your battery bank is too small, it will not be able to hold enough energy. It will not be able to store enough energy during the day when the sun is available. So at night, there's no sun. When you connect your loads to the battery bank, it will not be able to sustain those loads. Why? Because it is too small. The amount of energy that was stored in the battery bank was not enough to you know, carry your load throughout the night. Why? Because the capacity of the battery bank is too small. So when a battery bank is too small to sustain your load when the sun is not available at night, the battery bank will surely run down when your consumption is higher than what is stored in the battery bank. Reason number two is that you are using too many appliances at night. When too many appliances are connected to the battery bank at night, the battery bank will not be able to sustain those loads. It's like uh, you have a reservoir, you have an overhead tank, and it is filled with water. Now, this is the outlet pipe. And uh, so many households are connected to this outlet pipe. They are making use of this, uh, the water in this reservoir. So when their consumption is higher than the volume of water that is stored in this reservoir, and there is no source, there is no input source, that is, uh, there's no pump that is pumping in water to this reservoir while they are using the reservoir. So this uh, reservoir, the water in this reservoir will finish, uh, you know, it will be drained faster. Why? Because so many outlets are connected to this reservoir. So for you to make sure that this reservoir will be able to sustain this household or this outlet, you need to have a very large water tank or water reservoir that will be able to sustain this household. Now, if you have a battery, this is your battery, positive and negative, and your inverter is connected to this battery, and there are a lot of AC loads or DC loads that are connected, that are taking power from this uh, battery bank at night. Remember, at night, there is no sun, there is no input. The sun is not there to generate. The solar panels are not there to push in energy into this battery bank. So everything you are taking from this battery bank or your load solely depends on what is stored in this battery bank. So when you have many appliances, refrigerator, air condition, you have uh, your televisions, you have your ceiling fans, you have your standing fans, a lot of appliances, you connect them to this battery bank, it will drain fast when it is not large enough to sustain this load. So that is why when you are designing your solar system, you should take note or take care of the appliances that you will be powering or you will be using at night. Because at night, there is no sun. Your solar panels are lying idle. They are dormant. They are not generating anything. So you cannot rely on them at night because the sun is not there. So uh, you see a lot of adverts or a lot of people will tell you uh, you can use 5 kilowatt hour with your 2 air conditioners, you can use 10 kilowatt hour with your you know, 3 air conditioners or whatever. So these things, when they are not properly designed, when your battery bank is not properly sized to sustain the load you'll be using at night when the sun is not available, once you connect these appliances to the battery bank at night, it will surely shut down. Why? It cannot sustain this load. Reason number three is that your batteries are aging or poorly maintained. Mostly um, lead acid batteries, uh, when they are aging, when they are poorly maintained, you, you need to top water, you need to clean them, you need to do you know, one or two maintenance. When you are not carrying out routine maintenance on the batteries, uh, times they will be failing, at night when you connect your loads to the battery then also when your batteries are aging when they are aging they will not be able to store energy 
their capacity, their ability to store energy will be greatly reduced. So when uh, the solar panels generate energy during the day uh, and push it to the battery bank, it will not be able to you know, hold that energy, do not be able to sustain that energy. So at night, when you switch on your loads and you are expecting the battery bank to supply energy to this load, to power this load, the battery bank, you know, will shut down. You see it draining very fast. It means it's already aging. It's already going. So uh, you need to do something about it. Then uh, another reason, reason number four, is that your batteries are not fully charged during the day when your batteries are not fully charged during the day because of cloudy weather like now we are having um we are in a rainy season there are some days uh you will not have enough sunshine you have cloudy days during those days you will not your uh, solar panels will not be able to generate a reasonable amount of energy to power your loads so at this point you need to do energy management you need to manage uh, load management you need to manage your loads you know that your solar panels were not that is why you need to have um, smart inverters or smart controllers that tells you what your solar panels were able to generate during the day so by looking at that uh, figure or by looking at that information you will be able to know that oh my solar panels only generated one kilowatt hour or two kilowatt hour today. So uh, this is the amount of energy I can use. So you will now regulate your loads. You will now manage your loads so that you see how you can make use of the one kilowatt hour or the two kilowatt hour, uh, the two kilowatt hours that the solar panels were able to generate during the day. So that you know uh, the system will be able to carry you, will be able to power your load. Then uh, pending when you have enough sunshine, you know, to recharge your battery. At times, it's not as if the batteries are bad or the solar panels are bad. But because you're having cloudy weather, you know, there is uh, the intensity of sun during the day uh, wasn't high. So there's no way the solar panels, they, 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 they give the battery what they receive. So if there's no, if the sunshine is not, the intensity of sun is not enough, uh, you can't uh, expect the solar panels to, you know, produce, uh, up to their rated capacity when the uh, irradiance is low. Reason number five is that you have bad system design or inverter uh, and charge controller settings. Now, when your system is poorly designed, you know, uh, the loads, you don't know your total daily energy consumption. You don't know the total power rating of your loads that you're consuming every day. With Without this information, you will not be able to size your battery bank. You will not be able to size your solar panels. You will also not be able to size your solar charge controller or your inverter. So when your system is poorly designed, there is no way that system will be able to power your load. Most times you will undersize the system. Why? Because you don't have accurate information to use in sizing the system. Now, if you want to know how to size the various components of a solar power system, I have a PDF that uh, a handbook on solar system sizing that will guide you using uh, a, a, um, a neck requirements, you know, that will properly guide you on sizing the various components of a solar power system. So if you need it, the link is in the comment. So you can get the PDF and it's going to guide you on how to choose your size of cable, your breakers from the solar panel to the charge controller, from the charge controller to your battery, from your battery to your inverter, from your inverter to your loads. All these things you need to properly size them so that your system will be able to, you know, sustain you throughout the day. Mostly when you're using the system at night, when the sun is not available. Most people are not feeling it. Most of those persons who are using solar only during the day. You can't feel it, uh, the effect of your battery bank because uh, your solar panels are there. So during the day, everything you're using is from the solar panels. Mostly when you're using a hybrid inverter, it properly manages what comes from the sun to you know, power your loads. But when it comes to nighttime usage, you need to properly size your battery bank to supply the energy that will be able to power your loads during the day. So 
make sure your system is properly designed, you know, by uh, engaging the services of a professional uh, solar system installer. Now, here are some of the things you can do. Number one is you should reduce unnecessary nighttime usage. There are some loads that you don't need them. Some people, just because uh, they have installed solar, they feel solar is like generator or power from the grid. So they will go and put on, uh, you know, different loads. Mind you, any load you uh, put on, if you switch on your inverter and you turn on any load, that load is taking energy from your battery. So the longer that load is on, you know, the more energy the load is taking from your battery bank. That load is draining your battery. So any load that is unnecessary, that you are not using, put it off. Don't leave that load on because it will be draining your battery uh, bank. Some appliances are not uh, needed at night. You don't even need those appliances, but because you are seeing the light, you just go and uh, put on those appliances. So you should learn what is called load or energy management. If you are making use of a solar power system, learn how to properly manage your load so that your battery bank will be able to sustain you. Number two, you should monitor your battery health regularly. Always monitor the health of your batteries. If you're using a lithium battery, use a lithium battery that you can, you know, monitor the individual cell voltage. Like if you have um, uh, 51.2 volts, you know that you have uh, 16 cells connected in series. So you should be able to monitor the voltage of each of those cells to see if your BMS is properly balancing the voltage of these cells. If your BMS, that is your battery management system, is working. So there are batteries that can tell you the individual performance of the cells. They will tell you the voltage. They will tell you the cell uh, temperature. So you can know the difference. You can see the difference between uh, cell 1 and cell 2 or cell 1 and cell 16. So this will help you to know if your battery is functioning properly. If you're using lead acid battery, you should always maintain the battery. If you're using, uh, what's it called, flooded battery, you check the, um, the, the, the distilled water level. If it, you need to top it, you do it. Routine maintenance. You clean the terminals of your battery. You check uh, the terminals if they are properly tight. If uh, uh, whether they are loose or not. If they are loose, you properly tie them. Then you check your cables if they are still okay. So you need to carry a routine maintenance on your system to make sure that the health of your battery is okay. If you have lead acid batteries and they are connected in series, you have four connected in series or two connected in series, you should always make sure, either series or in parallel, you should always make sure that they are voltage, they have uh, balanced voltage. If each of the battery, they are all of them, their voltage are at the same level. Because if you have four batteries, you have battery one, two, three, four, and these batteries are connected in series, and uh, each of them is, let's say, if they are fully charged, you have twelve. Uh, some at times they will be written, um, they will be written thirteen point zero, thirteen point zero, thirteen point zero. But this last battery is reading uh, 11.8. It means there's something wrong with this battery. It is either you charge it separately uh, with a 12 volt uh, charger, you remove it and charge it to make sure its voltage is uh, it's, uh, the same with this other uh, voltage. So if after charging it and the battery is still draining to this uh, voltage, you should know that the battery is bad and you need to either replace this battery. If all of them, yeah, you need to replace one of these batteries. But if you are replacing uh, a battery in a battery bank, all of them should be of, um, you know, the same uh, characteristics. They should have the same parameters. So when you're connecting batteries in a battery bank, all of them should be of the same age and uh, the same, they should have the same parameters so that they will function very well. So if this one is 11.8 and you connect your inverter to this system or even your charge controller, they will be sensing if you multiply this 13.0 by 4, it's supposed to give you uh, 50 something. But because of this one, the voltage will drop. So the inverter will be reading this less voltage. This one will be dragging down the voltage of this other battery. And before you know it, 
your battery bank will be shutting down. At times, it's not as if all the batteries in this battery bank are bad. It may just be only one battery that is bad. So you should check the health of your battery, the state of health of your battery to see if they are still okay. Then you should make sure that your solar panels are getting enough sun during the day. They should be installed in a place that is open, that is receiving enough sun from sun uh, from sunrise to sunset so that the solar panels will be able to harness enough energy during the day to charge your battery to 100% state of charge. Then you can up, you upgrade your battery bank if needed. If you know that your battery bank cannot sustain your loads at night, then you need to upgrade your battery bank. You need to add your uh, you need to add. Uh, additional batteries so that they will be able to sustain your load but when you are adding batteries you should know that you also need to increase your solar panels so that they'll be able to efficiently charge the battery bank then the next one you should get a professional a professional to recheck your inverter settings and system design most times it's not as if your solar panels are bad or your battery bank is bad but your settings on the charge controller or the inverter you know, if they are not uh, properly done, the, 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 the system will not function well. Like the inverter, we have the low voltage disconnect and we also have the high voltage uh, disconnect. So you need to properly set these things. There was one, um, uh, somebody did a charge controller, a 48, it was a 24, it is a 24 volt system, but he did not properly impute the settings on the charge controller to 24 volts. So the charge controller was reading the battery bank as 12 volts. So the charging current, there were enough panels on the roof, but the charging current was about 12 volts, I mean uh, 12 amps. And the 12 amps was unable to properly charge those batteries. And the charge controller was sensing the voltage as a uh, 12 volts, whereas it is a 24 volts. So I have to change the settings to 24 volts and also increase the charging current uh, based on the C rates the charging rate of the batteries because they are lead acid batteries and the system picked up and it's performing very well. So most times look at the settings of the charge controller. You have the manual. There is a manual. The inverter comes with the manual. The charge controller comes with the manual. So look at the settings on the manual of the device so that you be able to properly impute those uh, settings to correspond with the charging and discharging recommendations of the battery. So uh do you have a solar system that always fail at night please share your experience in the comment section and also please let me know where you are watching from if you need the pdf the link is in the description uh, and there's also a whatsapp number that you can contact me to get the pdf on how to properly size your solar power system thank you for watching and see you in my next video